Hi guys, so there is no volume on my YouTube video, which is usually what has been happening. Somebody's messing with my laptop computer, but anyway, I'm going to get straight with it. A lot of people, um, it's all about limitations, limitations, which is a, a big issue that I had um, here um, with um, Purdue University, as well as pretty much being on the south side of Chicago. A lot of people have limitations on you. Right now with Kamala Harris, people have limitations of what they think a black woman should be, especially in politics. They think, pers presume that a black woman should be polite and, and, and pleasant, but that's not necessarily how it is. That's not necessarily how it is. Sometimes a black woman does not have to be pleasant all the time. Hello, hello. Yeah, my volume is messed up on my, uh, they keep taking off my laptop. Presuming that a black woman has to be, a, presuming that a black woman has to be pleasant all the time. Literally, mm, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm looking at Julia Mejia's um, uh, Twitter. And there's a lot of issues with that doggy dog rule. You know, people like, they want to just, even in a black community, it's like you may graduate, you may reach a top, top level success in your career and your family, and still it's all about code switching, literally, or figuring out what's going on, what's trending, what's trending. You know, you could be Cardi B, or you either going to be Cardi B, or you're going to be Kamala Harris. You know what I'm saying? You could be Kanye, you could be, um, Kim Kardashian, or you could be, um, God, Trump's, um, campaign manager, um, Condoleezza Rice, you know, people have very extreme, extreme opinions and expectation of what a black woman is. Like, what is a black woman? What is she? What is she and what is she not? It is real. It is really, really, really sad. People's opinions, and usually, especially in the public, especially in the public point of view, if you do not meet up to people's expectations of you, you literally have to prove yourself one way or another just to be able to survive. I just graduated from college with honors. I just graduated with college with honors, with honors. I just graduated with college with honors. And I'm looking at a pastor and his daughter and his family, and I'm wondering why does not anybody in this family have a college degree? What is wrong with this picture? Even even a degree of Bible studies. Like Bible school, like seriously Bible school. Like a Bible school diploma. Seriously, a Bible school diploma.
just go to Bible school. Just go get your, get go to your father's Bible school. Seriously, go to your father's Bible school. It is a lot of issues. I just graduated from, from Purdue University outside of Gary, Indiana. Outside of Gary, Indiana. One of the worst, poorest, low-income communities. Poorest. I mean, Gary, Indiana. The elementary schools are closed down, boarded up, and there is literally bugs crawling up the ceilings of these elementary schools. The elementary schools are boarded up. The fire departments are boarded up. The street lights don't work. I wouldn't even test their running water. But Gary and Gary, Indiana is getting better. But do you think that someone would actually go back to their own community of Gary, Indiana and contribute back to their own community that they, that they live for and that they came from? No. No, they wouldn't. Absolutely not. They would go and keep hustling after a dime in a pickle. When you are dirt poor, you have to do what you have to do in order to survive. Gary, Indiana, as well as New Orleans, Louisiana, as well as Skid Row, L.A., Los Angeles, California, Oakland, California, Memphis, Tennessee, dirt, dirt poor. It's like a really low, low scale. You're in the rich part of Memphis, Tennessee, and you're in the worst part of Memphis, Tennessee. You're in the rich part of Nashville, and you're in the poor part of Nashville. You're in the rich, dirt poor part of D.C. You're in a rich, rich, ritzy area of Washington, D.C. in Georgetown. Or you're in the dirt, dirt poor part of D.C. near the hood. Where they have young teenage girls in the neighborhood. There's always a different wealth gap. And people, they don't understand why is she not part of this wealth, wealth gap issue? Why is she still here? They don't understand that. Having a degree from, literally, from Gary, Indiana. Gary, Indiana. Gary. Gary's not home of the Jacksons. Gary, Indiana is home of low, low door poor people who will do anything they can to, to survive. I'm surprised. There are some nice parts of Gary, but still, as a whole, the city is horrible. You could try to smile about it and be pleasant about it all you want to, but literally, literally, you can't put a smiley face on poor. Oh, we're happy to live in depression. We're happy to live in 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 the in the rocks and the ritz. No, that's this is not a way to live. With trash 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 bags on your windows, that's not a way to live. 
trash bags on your windows, no AC in the house. Your car is broken down. That's no way to live. On the top of that, you are you are just graduated from college and you have to deal with a disabled husband in a house with three or four kids to take care of. That is not a way for a successful woman to live. If you accept life for you to be that way in your life, okay, you may accept life to be that for you in your way. But again, that is no way for somebody to live. Trash bags on the window and taking care of a disabled husband, which is a which is a lot from from some of the women, most a lot of the women that I've seen in my life. Is this what I really have to look up to? Is this the mentor that I have to look up to? Is this my new mentorship, my new leadership? Is this the mother figure that I have to look up to? A woman hustling on the streets with a disabled husband with trash bags on the window and saying this is how black women should be? This is how black women should live and this is the way life is supposed to be? If you don't like it, get over it. This is just the way life is. You have to deal with, you have to deal with it is. There's no way you can work for it. This is just how life is. Really? Yeah, really. Have to hustle through the college, graduate a year early on top of that with honors, and you want me to marry a sick man and have him, not only is he sick, but he's unemployed and he's broke and he's living with his parents and he still gets a check like me and there's no way that we can come up out of that out of that check. Yeah, this is the state of black America. It is really sad. That almost almost 50% of black America lives on a check and there's no way that we can escape from the check. It is literally that that sad the state of black America even for single black women to settle not just for a man but settle for a check. You're not selling for a husband. You're selling for a check in order to survive. People are not looking at you. They're looking at your check. It's really that low, especially in the black community. It's really low. It is very low. You, if you're white, you're if you're white, you're okay. If you're brown, you, you, you're, you're even better. But if you're black, as well as if you're a certain skin tone complexion, obviously whatever you do is not going to work until you learn society's expectations of you. And you can't run from the color line. Even in 2020 modern day society, Kamala Harris still was able to marry up. And eventually have her career. But a lot of black women like myself... Who are not who are of mixed race here and there and are not accepted by society based on how we see ourselves, but we're accepted by society based on how society presumes us to be. We literally have to settle for a check, not a mate, for a check. Okay, you'll be able to make it. You and him, y'all work good together because y'all get the same check. With three, even if you have three accredited college degrees, even if you have three Harvard, even if you have a Harvard graduate degree, you still have to settle for a check in Black America 2020. And Kamala Harris, as well as Ayanli Presley, as well as Miss Amar, will tell you the same thing. Even in 2020, millennial Black America, even during the Civil Rights Movement, Black women still had to settle for a check. Black men, they're not looking at us, they're not looking at our credentials, they're not looking at anything, they're looking at our checks. Even with Cardi B, even with Beyonce, they're still looking at our money. How much does she get? How much does she put in? How much does she put out? Even a rich man will tell you the same thing. He will look at you the same way. How much can I get out of her for what price and for what cost? I don't care how much it takes. I don't care what you guys have to do. I want her this way and I want it, I want it, I want it like, like I want it. And that's the price that I have. And nothing will change that price. And they will say it's nothing personal. I 
don't give a damn how many degrees you have. It is what it is. I just graduated college with honors on the top of my class. And I speak three, four, five different languages. You know what? But it's still not enough. It is what it is. It is what it is. It's life. Get over it. If you don't like the job that we have for you, oh well, get over it. This is what you went to school for and this is the job that you will get. You try to code switch it, trend it all you want to, but it is what it is. You're not selling for that person or how cute they are. You're even in the church, even with the church, you are still settling for a check. You don't even have to put color purple on it. You could try to put color purple on it all you want to. But at the end of the day, it's still a check. He has a check. She has a check. That's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. They're looking at you and they're looking at your income. And there's no way that you can get up out of that property hole. This is the way it is. And people are not getting married to get married. They're getting married for a check. It is really low. It is really low. Really low. And they're not really looking at the long term, they're looking at the short term. Because most of the times right now, and literally for the black community, and especially if you are disabled in the black community, and you are disabled, is is literally who can we bury first. It is literally that low. And you're just pretty much barely getting by to survive. So pretty much with women, with women like, you know, with, there's an issue with schizophrenia because your, your brain is lost in time. Your brain is lost. You're lost. In, you're lost in time. You're lost. You're disoriented. You're lost. In, you're lost in focus. Your brain is lost. So there are a lot of other issues that we need to work with. Absolutely. Absolutely. But literally, literally. It's not even about this. It's literally about a check. You can't run from your check. It is literally that bad. So anyway, guys, you know, I'm going to go ahead and just give a shout out again to Con to Kobe Bryant and his family. We still have a lot to do and a lot to work on as a community, as pretty much as well as a, as a black community. We have to uplift each other, especially 
out of the craziness of what whatever is going on in Detroit, Portland, Seattle, Chicago, and D.C., we really have to get our focus together and focus on what we need to do to get out there and vote. Yes, voter suppression is real, and we need to focus on our delegate count, of course, but we still need to continue the progress and continue to uplift each other as well as our communities. And should have stopped it from our goal. Yes, it may be a little bit crazy to some people, but you know what? That's still not going to change our focus and what we need to do as a community. There's a lot of issues that we need to work on. So I'm going to go ahead and give out shout out to Miss Kamala Harris, a beautiful woman. And you know what? A lot of these young kids out today, no matter where you go to, they, you know, they're hurting. These young kids are still hurting from Kobe Bryant. They won't admit it to you, but yeah, they're hurting. So we still need to continue to uplift our, our young black community, uplift each other. Because right now the NBA game has been on a, on a hold, on a steal. So, you know, these young kids are hurting and they're in pain right now because they don't have any leadership to look up to. Now, they, they may go to school and get, a, and get a diploma, get a degree, yay, you go back to school, yay. But they need leadership. They need black, young, male leadership to look up to. And usually if kids are bored, they start getting violent. They start getting abusive. And usually if kids are getting bored and violent and abusive, they're going to get right back in trouble. And we're going to go back to the same, back to the same issues of young black violence. And police brutality that we just came back out of 10, 20 years ago in the 80s. And we just overcame it with a black president. And we uplifted black our black young black men and women by uh, increasing the black, the black high school graduation rates. So we need to still continue to raise up the black, the young black gradu high school graduation rate. So congratulations to class of 2020. Hey, but we still need to continue the goals and continue the uplifting the black community. Now, you know, it may be, it may be low to actually say, you know what? Hey, I just graduated from Purdue University. That is awesome. And now I'm on the streets begging for change. Like, what's up with this? I should have had a great job by now. I have a Purdue University diploma. And my computer is being used for um, a computer game. A baseball game, a, a, a racing card game, or whatever it is. It's not business, it's a, it's a game. It's a play game. So we still need to continue to uplift the black community. Absolutely. 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 Continue to uplift the black community. There's a lot that we need to do and uplift each other. So again, this is LaQueen, LaQueen Battle. I'm here live in downtown Boston. Tomorrow on Sunday, I will be in Milwaukee. I will be helping out with the city of Milwaukee as well as the DNC and the Convention Center for um, August the 17th through the 20th. And then on uh, Monday, August the 24th through the 27th, I will be in Charlotte, North Carolina, providing first aid services there as well as in Washington, D.C., providing first aid services for Al Sharpton and his team at the National March on Washington. So there is a lot. I've got a, and I'm starting a new job. Yay. Such an So there's a lot of stuff I got to do and I got to prepare myself. But right now I am a hot mess. <laughs> I am a hot mess, but I will do what I need to do in order to make sure my community is okay. 
All right. I love you guys. Peace and much blessings. This is LaQueen, Battle First Aid Responder Services, live from downtown Boston, Massachusetts, here in my office. I love you guys. Please keep uplifted the black community and all these young black kids, young black youth, the young black youth that is still suffering right now from Kobe Bryant. They won't admit it to you. They will not tell you even tell you anything they will deny it to your face but yes these young black youth are still suffering from losing losing a leader that meant something to them so you know what there's still a lot more get these get get them involved you see them doing hustling on the street get them, go invite them to a basketball game invite them out take them take them out to eat I don't have any money. I can't take anybody out. But take these young people out to eat. Eat. There's still a lot more that needs to be done. And and hooray to the new class of 2020 through 2021. Okay? Shout out to the youth of 9-11. The 9-11 young kids that just became 18 and graduated from high school. Yes, the 9-11 generation is still alive and well. And we still have a lot more to work on as a black community. Okay, so this is LaQueen from Battle First Aid Responder Services. Yes, I am a hot mess. And if there's an issue that needs to be addressed, I will address the issue. I will try my best to address the issue. You asking me to work? Give me an application. <laughs> okay, so this is LaQueen, guys. I love you. Please, please continue to keep me in your thoughts and your prayers. I need as much help as you can. And, and limitations are just people's opinions about you. It's not really life, but people... Oh, Julia, Julia Mejia is still Twittering. She's a councilwoman here in Boston. So literally, limitations are people's opinions about you. It's not your own opinion about yourself. So you can set your life based on other people's people's uh, words or you can set your life on based on how you feel about a situation. It's really all up to you. Do you want people to limit you or do you want to limit yourself? Okay. So there's a lot out there and you know what? Life is what it is. People, especially right now in the political climate, people will dig up dirt like you have no belief, but at the end of the day is how you deal with that dirt that matters. Okay. So shout out to the Kamala Harris, um, campaign yay kamala harris as well as the joe biden campaign and also shout out to president um trump and and uh, mike pence his campaign just pray for safety um health and safety and greetings to both the safety of the conventions the virtual conventions as well as the physical conventions um in charlotte as well as in milwaukee and shout out to Al Sharpton and his campaign, as well as the NAACP and their campaign in Washington, D.C. So there's a lot more to do, and I should be making money. Like, I should be making money right now. Like, this is ridiculous to work for free all this summer when people are making millions in the city of Boston. It is literally ridiculous, okay? To be a college graduate from Purdue University and being broke and just working for free like I'm an 18-year-old college student. Just give her um, um, uh, money for a movie. It's ridiculous. Okay, it is ridiculous. But what needs to be done needs to be done. And I do need a budget. Literally, especially in the city of New York and especially in the city of Boston. Right now, my, my monthly budget has so far been about $3,000, $4,000 I've spent a month. And you know what? In return, I am not getting any of that back. I have literally spent over $4,000 a month just living in the city of Boston. And have I been reimbursed by the mayor or by the government? Because mm -mm. <laughs> I'm doing this all for free. But you think oh, she's only surviving on a $900 check a month? Mm -mm. I'm spending $4,000 a month. So what else am I doing? I'm, I'm working somehow. I'm on the street somehow. I'm hustling somehow. So you have to do what you have to do some way or another. But I'm, I'm working. I am working. $4,000 a month, $3,000, $4,000 a month is a lot, but you have to do what you have to do. In New York, it might be cheaper, and especially Chicago, it might be way cheaper, but you know what? It is what it is. It is the reality of life, okay? All right, so I got to get this budget together. I got to get this donation list together as well as pretty much it's 730 here in Boston. I got to get packed and ready for my trip tomorrow and just be available when I'm needed, okay? So, guys, please keep me in your thoughts and your prayers. I'm a hot mess. I'm trying to get myself involved and together, all right? This is LaQueen from, from Battle First Aid Responder Services, uh, Adult and Pediatric Services. Um, on some, I'm... Authorized by the National Provider Identification Network, Department of Health and Human Services. 
Center for Medicaid and Medi Medicare Services. It says I am an emergency physician. <laughs> It says I am a doctor on on the internet. On a couple websites, it does say I am a DR, period, a doctor. But I am not board certified, okay? So I still have to go th get my graduate degree as well as get go to medical school or go through whatever um, certifications needed in order to just to be able to get the accreditation, board certified acc accreditation. So I may have the research potential to prove that I am an MD, but I still need to be certified by, by a peer, a board of my own peers that have pretty much can evaluate evaluate me and evaluate all of the credentials as well as evaluate all the physical research as well as I have to do the written be published as well have to be published in order to prove my credentials that eventually I can become an MD uh, so I am certified by the Center for Medicaid Services as a DR period but I still need to be board certified by a group of my peers in order to get that status. <laughs> All right, so guys, please, this is LaQueen Bottle from Bottle First Aid Responder Services. Keep me in your thoughts and your prayers. I love you guys so much. Bye. Have a good day. Tomorrow, I will be in Milwaukee. All right, bye, guys.